Okay, so this first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna alter the crab, and uh, what I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna create a couple variables that manage the, the crab's image. So the image that's shown, so far the way that you know how to do this is you go in and you create yourself an actor, and uh, it asks you when you say that you wanna build it, it says which image would you like me to use? And what you're actually doing here is you're using a method called set image. And that's what I'm going to manipulate to do an animation. I'm just going to set the image of the actor to the different steps in the animation. So the first thing I'll do in here is this crab is only going to have a left and right walk. So when it walks left, walks right, meaning the kind of legs will wiggle back and forth. So I'm going to make an instance variable here. And I'll go over that terminology with you just before I, it's just hard to talk and type, so just give me a second here. So this uh, instance variable, remember a class defines all possible objects in that group. So we're saying any crab you want to make follows these rules in the crab class. But you could have many instances of the crab class running around your screen. You could have 10 crabs running around the screen if you wanted. You could have a million. So instance variables, they're variables that belong to that crab. They usually have information about the crab. Now one good thing to get in the habit of thinking about when you're creating your variables is I'll show you where variables live and die. This is known as scope as a programmer and scope it's not like the mouthwash that you use in the morning. It's scope meaning where can you see this variable? Where is it visible in your code? And there's a very simple rule. This brace is the last block I created before I declared that variable. So this brace here is the block where that variable lives. If I look a little lower, you see it's already highlighted for me. This is its partner right there. That's where the variable dies. So basically what it means is that variable is born in this class and it only is accessible in that class file. Variables, I could, I could create them in here, in this block but it would be born right here at the start of this block and the computer would take that memory back as soon as that block is over. So most programming languages have some form of scope and a block scope is usually the way it goes. And again, if it's created, it lives and dies in that block. Any block which goes deeper, you can see it as well. But the reason it's important that you have some kind of scope is you don't want all variables visible all the time or you'll run out of memory. You'll just pollute the memory so badly that the computer would be very slow. So it only uses memory when it's visible. And this image is visible to every crab instance. That's why it's called an instance variable. So um, I'm gonna call this, I can't remember which foot it is, but let's just pretend it was uh, walk right. And walk left. And uh, what I'm gonna do is get you in the habit here to start now of when this crab is built, that's usually where you initialize its instance variables. So before anyone can use the crab, this is where we would initialize those variables. So all I've done here is I've told Java, hey Java, I've got a couple of things that I want you to remember about crabs. Sometimes they walk left, sometimes they walk right. And Java says, okay, I got it but we actually haven't given any meaningful picture or any code associated with those images. So that's what I'll do here. Walk right equals new uh, green foot image. And some of you might already uh, remember how to use the image class, but you just give it the location of that uh, uh, image. So in this scenario, that's the folder that is, uh, odd, whoops, sorry, not sounds. That's the folder that's visible without having to do a directory. You don't have to uh, use a full path. And I'll make this one the first crab image. So let's call this one here. Uh, and I believe it's a PNG. Crab.png. So what that means is this variable is telling Java it points to this picture right here. So now I can connect it up. I'm gonna do the same thing with when it walks left. 
is a new green foot image. And I might want to pick better names for these, but it's crab2. That's the name of the crab2.png. Um, incidentally, one thing that may or may not cause you some grief, in Windows uh, computers, there's no case sensitivity in a file name. So capital C and lowercase c for the crab would be the same file, and Windows would find it for you. However, that's not the case with all um, file systems. So I'm going to keep mine consistent with the others. That means if I run this on a different operating system, it should still work, whereas it may not work if they were capitalized. OK, so now what I want to do is define a way that this crab is going to move. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a, uh, an image, maybe let's call it uh, uh, let's call it uh, walk. I'm not feeling very creative, I suppose. So I'll make a new method here that'll show this crab what it's supposed to do when it walks. So here's where those if statements are going to come into play. Basically, what we want to check is, are we already looking at the right image for the crab? So what I'm going to say is if you get the image of a crab, and it is walk left. What that means is that's the image that's visible for the crab. So what I want to do is alternate it. I want to put the other feet on there. So I'm going to go down here now and say change the image. So set image to be walk right. So here's something uh, that we've been doing. And it's not that it's careless. It's just that we're new to Java. We could go like this. And logically, this works. But as a programmer, we can do better than this. So every time you say if when you use Java, it costs you a lot of performance. So as programmers, we try to avoid saying the word if. And one way of doing that is to recognize that this crab only has two possible images, a left and a right. So what I'm going to do instead is say, if it wasn't the left, then I would like you to do this. I would like you to always do the other image. And you might want to make a note to yourself like, um, the right image is visible. So this is a, a new idea for you today. It's probably going to be most of the focus that we talk about. But basically, this decision structure is called an if-else statement. What it means is if the first one's true, Java will execute the code just like you've been practicing. But now that I've introduced this else statement, if it was false, if this yellow highlighted code is false, that tells Java you must go to this block here. <coughs> So the improvement in this is that Java will do exactly one of those two things. If it's true, it does the first one. If it's false, it does the second one. It always defaults to that else. And again, that way we don't have to ask Java to check. We just say automatically go here. So generally, all, all uh, I wouldn't say all. There's some programming languages that don't have a mechanism that looks like an if-else statement. But I would say the vast majority have an if-else statement or something that looks very similar. OK. Now, if you've been keeping track, you might be thinking, uh, this isn't going to work, though, Mr. Joyce. And uh, that's because we haven't told the crab what image it starts with. So I figured I'd ask you, um, where do you think I should put the code to give the crab its first picture? Any ideas? Well, anytime we want to start something, meaning the minute the crab is born, here's in the computer the code that's executed the minute the crab is born. So that's what I'm going to put in here, is I'm going to say set the image to be, uh, I don't know, let's say we start with the right image. Start on the right foot. How's that sound? Anyways, so in this case, <clears throat> I've told the crab about what its 
pictures would look like. And I'm telling it, begin on the right foot. And when you walk, just toggle the image. If you're already walking left, walk right. Otherwise, switch. So let's go have a look at what this behavior is going to look like for the crab. So I'll compile this code. Oops, sorry, I forgot to remove a little bit of uh, code here. So we can just blank that out here. And then I'll uh, recompile. We haven't talked about worms eaten yet. But now we should be able to visually uh, see something about this crab. Ooh. So it's doing that little simple basic animation now when it moves. So I don't know how much impress you know how impressive that is, but uh, at least you get a, the feeling of it is manageable, and this is how you could do an animation for one of your characters. Okay, so the only thing uh, um, that I want to add to this animation is, uh, and I'm going to do a different video after this one that goes a little deeper in as far as using more than one image and how we could do that. But um, uh, one thing, maybe let's see. Uh, I'll let this crab run around, and I guess uh, well. I gotta use my keys here to turn them. I can keep track um, of how many worms he's eaten. That's the only other place that we've done an instance variable. So if we go back to this crab class, if I want the crab to remember how many worms it's eaten, here's where I could uh, make that happen. And remember, all this says to Java is, I would like you to remember how many worms a crab has eaten, and I would like it to be an integer. Now, in this constructor, when that crab is born, how many worms has it eaten? The minute the crab is dropped into Greenfoot, how many worms have been eaten? Zero. Thank you. <laughs> you are alive. So I have to make sure that it's consistent. I'll say worms eaten is zero. And this crab will keep track for me now of how many worms it's eaten. So that was the code that I had removed before. So I'll uncomment that. This time, instead of just eating the worm, I'm going to keep track of uh, how many worms I've eaten. And here's the code that does it. Because I've eaten the worm, I will increment the number of worms. So Java, please take the value of worms eaten and make it equal to that number plus one more. And all that's going to happen is you get to the next level if you've eaten eight of them. Okay. So have a look here at the difference between this equal sign and this equal sign. This is a common thing that uh, beginning programmers uh, make a, a mistake on. Usually when we say equals, we're not talking about the mathematical equals. We're talking about assignment. So we're going to assign the value uh, worms eaten plus one. And we're going to take that number and assign it to this one. So that's a single equals when you want to change that number. This double equals in here. This is when you want to check whether something is true or false. So double equals is the one that will answer yes or no, but more accurately true or false when you ask questions in Java. <clears throat> the other operators in Java that do, um, if you want to test other conditions, um, you could go like this. You can probably guess that that's the less than operator. What do you think that would be? You might not be able to see it, actually. Can you see that? Yeah, that's uh, less than or equal. So these are the other operators. And there's one more that we haven't looked at here. Um, you see this equal sign? Um, we could also say that something is not equal, which is an exclamation mark equals. 
So we are going to play more, obviously, with looking at decisions and how they work. But here's some of the tools we've talked about using a comparison, uh, this double equals. And maybe you'll find an opportunity in your code to keep track of some kind of condition that uses less than, greater than, or not equal. Something else that's maybe a little bit more creative than uh, this beginning game. Okay. So I think we're going to leave it here as far as basic goes. And uh, I will go through one more th with you uh, in another video.